What's going on? What are we talking about? What well, show? There, there's show. some show that's like ending this. No, year don't tell me that. I just um, found that out five minutes ago. It was really. I know. I just found that out. It was really depressing. But um, apparently, it's you know we all are feeling like we need crisis counseling uh, because of it. So good. you know, um, let's go. Tell us about crisis counseling. Uh, well, you know we're we started planning the crossover earlier than we ever have because we know it's it's five hours. It's you know based on the most you know seminal important I think you know DC comic book story. Um, you know it requires a lot of planning. It requires a lot of care. And, you know, as always, you know, we approach it from the standpoint of don't screw it up, you know. Um, the, we, we assembled this amazing writer's room of showrunners, writers, and we like, you know, we worked and crafted, you know, I think a, a very, you know, a, a really cool story that, you know, honors not just the Arrowverse, but honors the, the fact that it's, it's got to be more than just the arrows. It, it has to touch other corners of the DC universe. And um, I'm really excited. I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's probably the most important thing I've ever worked on for a while. You know, so the pressure is enormous. In terms of mapping it out, obviously you normally have a full season yeah. plus the crossover. So you have different pieces moving. But now you only have 10 episodes and the crossover in the middle of it. How did you go about breaking pieces into the right place or just finding the strategic element? That's, that's a great question. I think, you know, we, we started um, talking a lot about it being like a short order, you know, like a streaming show, you know, eight to ten episodes. And we knew where the crossover landed. We knew where the finale landed, obviously. And it was just a matter of, okay, this is the landscape we have to work with. What, what do we want to do? What do we want to accomplish in that space? And, um, you know, it's, it's always been the most amazing staff. And everyone just rolls their sleeves up and gets it done. When you're going into a final season of a show, there's always that, okay, who's going to be coming back? Who are we going to show? How do you go about selecting, like a character like Prometheus, for example, how do you go about selecting, okay, who's going to come back for this final season? That's, that's a good question. And it's tough because, you know, at, look, at the end of the day, and, you know, Twitter doesn't want to hear about this, and I don't think the audience really wants to hear about this, but, like, you have a certain amount of money, you know, um, and, and you've got actors who are available and some who are not available, and, you know, some are working on other projects, and there's just realities that you have to deal with. Um, and you go into it with, like, your wish list, and then reality intrudes, and cuts down that wish list. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, we, we love Jason. We, we love the character of Prometheus. Um, you're seeing a different version of Prometheus than you've seen before, I will say, in the, in the series premiere. Um, but it's, uh, I'm sorry, I said Jason, I meant Josh. Um, it's been a long Comic-Con, <laughs> long Comic-Con. Um, Every single person has said that because you were all shooting last night. We're all exhausted. Yeah. We're all exhausted. And um, we're, we're barely, we're lucky we're able to get the sh name of the show correct um, at this point. But, you know, uh, you know, Josh is amazing. We've always loved him. And uh, he was always on our short list when we said we want to revisit certain moments and certain characters. Um, so it, we're just lucky that we were able to get him because he's a talented guy and he's busy. And, you know, there were other shows out there. Um, I can tell you that the Monica Garrett is going to reprise his role as the monitor in the uh, crossover, but he's also going to play the anti-monitor as well, um, and that's the big bad of the crossover. Um, so the, and you're going to see like a lot of familiar faces. Like the, the really the goal of season eight is look is we're looking forward, but we're really looking backwards to look forwards. Um, and we're acknowledging sort of all the greatest hits and all the key moments of the show and that includes a lot of, you know, key characters and familiar faces. Um, again, we're always working with the limitations that we have of reality, but uh, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm thrilled that we're, you know, the people who are coming back, um, you know, they're family. And it's, it's wonderful to, you know, to see them again. Did you, you, did you have to script out every 
how did you break it in terms of the episodes with you because of such a tight schedule? Did you have to actually script further out than you traditionally would, or is it just the outline and then go? Um, I think in a perfect world we would have scripted out further than we usually would. It's just hard to do given the timeline that we're operating with. Um, I would say everything has been broken out in advance. We know what each episode is, um, and that's that's more unusual than not. Um, usually it's more like we know the general tent poles of, of the season. We know like this is episode 6, this is episode 13, this is episode 21. Um, this was more like we know it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Cool. We're going to wrap it up here. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you.